and go. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. And tonight we're going to be having a lot of fun because my mother is here in the shop. Say hi, mom. No, we're gonna just going to have more fun. We always have a lot <laughs> yes. of fun. Uh, so we just finished making the uh, the dovetail molding plane on the last uh, four weeks, and so it's about time to do another Q and A. And my mom is actually going to be going. She is an itinerant missionary. Uh, they travel all over the world uh, for different reasons, uh, for different uh, different places. But they're going to be going off to South Korea, uh, and they'll be there for six months. Four. Four months, not six he months. He wants me going. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured we'd have her in to, uh, to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to be just doing an enjoyable night. Um, basically doing a Q&A. So if anyone has any questions, put those down in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions for my mom, um, mm. it's fair game tonight. <laughs> it's once in a lifetime chance here. Uh, so if you really want to know about my background. <laughs> uh, uh -oh, um, Alice joined. And then we have a... <laughs> I have a few other things. My mom brought in her carving tools, which are really kind of cute. I want to show those off as they're a little bit different. And as they're well as... Only some of my carving tools. Yes. Those are my travel These are the travel, yeah. the travel tools, yeah. the ones you take with you on the airplane. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, not on it. <laughs> well, underneath <laughs> the airplane. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's on it, but yeah. not accessible. <laughs> oh, and if you've been watching Instagram or the, the main Wood by Right page, you may have seen uh, Bob here. Uh, we, were, we were at an anti we were at a resale shop and we came across uh, Chia Pet Bob, um, Bob Ross, and I was like, um, yes, we've got to get that. So tonight we'll, we'll put hair on Bob and just have a, a fun time all around. Um, yeah, so uh, do, are there any questions so far? Yes, Alan interested? wants to know some of James's nicknames. <laughs> but from which person is the question? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Why don't you start? Okay. From you may need to get a little closer to the microphone right there. Okay, so from the the day he was born, he... Well, no, you had two nicknames, didn't you? You were Love Buckets for the first few months of his my, life. My birth date is on, is on Valentine's Day. He's a Valentine baby. Um, first of the Valentine that year. Um, and then after that, probably when you were about one year old, you became Bobby Joe. And... Oh, don't ask why. He's <laughs> just always know. been Bobby Joe. So, and now we try to call him James, but sometimes Bobby or Bo or, yeah. You never know with me. <laughs> A-U. Age. <laughs> <laughs> I say my biggest nickname for you is Bub. 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 Yeah. If Bub and Babe. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I call you Babe. You don't call me Babe. No. <laughs> Not normally. And no. it's really funny because you call me babe, but, but your dad, dad calls Jason, Jason babe. The other son is babe, <laughs> which is really bad when we're out shopping. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we do have stories like that. But, okay. Oh, I've got one other thing we might do tonight. And if you guys want to see this, let me know. Um, I've got two blocks of wood here, and I thought we might do a little chisel off between um, mom <laughs> and wife and see who is better at carving. And uh, yes, so we'll, we'll 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 give them each even playing wood fields. They'll have the same block, well, the different blocks of wood, but the same wood. Each have the same type of chisel, oh. and then each get their choice of carving mallet. Um, or if they want to do it freehand, and we'll give them like five minutes to carve a heart and see who comes up with the best heart in five minutes, or something of that nature. So if anyone has fun ideas for that, uh, let us know. But, uh, I figure if, if my mom can talk about my background on the live, <laughs> I'll this out. It's fair game. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll have a little bit of fun here. Says the child who's already had his birthday this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Christmas is still it. <laughs> so what questions we got? Um, let's see. Matthew Schofield asked, did you have a tool addiction as a child? Um, I didn't have a tool addiction. I had a collecting addiction. Yeah. Oh my soul! He had a collecting addition. I had addiction. a rust collection, mm -hmm. and I still, still have, have a rust collection. collection. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I had I had all sorts of things. I had a rusted pocket knife. I had a rusted uh -huh. uh, revolver. The stakes had, from uh, the railroad. railroad Carved James's I head profile. <laughs> all sorts of things. Car what? Alan wants us to carve James's carve head James's profile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. New tattoo. Okay. Oh yeah, I want to show you these guys, these little things. These are my my mother's uh, carving tools, and they are because uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Two cherries. There we are. Makes a whole bunch of different carving tools. Focus. There we go. 
But they also make these tiny little palm chisels that are incredibly cute. Uh, but they're, they may look incredibly cute, but they are very functional. Uh, so they come in all the shapes and sizes you'd want. So you'd have your, your gouge and things like that. And it's really nice for people who like to do it one-handed. You can put it in the palm of your hand, wrap it around like this, and just have a finger on here. And so with one hand, you can you use can my spoon. Carve out. Okay. Any oh, yeah. carving you do on that, it belongs to me. <laughs> so you can use these. But and one of the reasons she brought them in is they need to be sharpened. So. Yeah. They went to Hungary last, and I, um, yeah, it, they haven't been sharpened well, even though he taught me how. This is incredibly fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's addictive. Especially with walnut. Um, but yeah, these are these are great. And I've, I've actually thought about getting a, a, a set of these and doing some traveling and just going to a random place, picking up a block of wood, and with a set of carving chisels, making something then and there. So with this and just a simple knife, um, like this is, this is the one my mom uses. Um, she has a, a, a protective glove that she can wear to go over it. And so something like this, you can have a lot of fun going other places. I actually have a video thought that I want to try about, one of my big hobbies is running. So what it would happen if I went into the woods with a knife, and I went running with a knife. Wait, wait, this wait, did your mother idea. tell you not to run with scissors? <laughs> no, and while running, knife. find some piece of wood and carve it while running and come out of the woods with something finished. And I thought that might be a lot of fun. As long as I actually come out of the woods. Yeah, no. <laughs> Crazy. You know, you know, this, you know what they say. When your wife lets you do those things, she's given up, <laughs> and she, she's going. She sure the life and be my guest. Up. That's the deal. I can go better now. James learned that from his father. We always, he always wanted to skydive, and we said fine because James, Jason, James's younger brother, and I were not interested at all. James, of course, was. Um, and we said, fine, as long as the life insurance is paid up, we're good to go. You can be crazy. But but this is why he married a nurse. <laughs> Running with time. He doesn't listen to anything I say regarding <laughs> no, that. No, but you could you could bandage him up when he comes out of the he woods. He doesn't with let me knife. bandage him now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll, you'll like this one. This is what my mom's oh, been working on. Oh, we're changing topics. I see yeah, this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, anyways, Blue Kestrel has nicely <laughs> asked a long time ago for an embarrassing childhood story, please. <sighs> Just one? Just one. Embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> childhood story. Huh. I can think of a lot. With Were you with Jason on top of the roof when Mom came out and said, do you let them do that? Oh, I was up there. Jason wasn't. Oh, okay. Jason wouldn't go out on the road. Yeah, we, we came out of church one day, and our house was right behind it. And there was a window that was right at their, their level, and they they didn't, I didn't know it, but they used to go out and walk on the roof. And so my mom looked up and said, do, do you let them walk on the roof? And I'm like, what? <laughs> There's James up on the roof. And how old were you? Uh, it would have been six, seven, or eight there. Yeah, it probably. It was probably around six or seven at that time. Yeah. 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 We, we went crazy. sledding off James the roof once. James is frozen. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful picture of you, honey. Oh, I gotta reset that. <laughs> yeah, we went we went sledding off the roof once. <laughs> Slide behind you. Okay. You do know that your son took after you too. <laughs> Here. Oop. Lines. Oh, oh okay. look, there's oh. Sarah. <laughs> 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 That's what we were talking about before the live. I'm waiting for someone to say to to tell you to let it go. Now that you're frozen, there it is. Oh, <laughs> and there's the surgeon. Or is there a pause? To me? <laughs> <laughs> wait, we'll just do. Yeah. Wait, wait, where'd it go? We'll just. Yeah. We don't need games. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bobby. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Now I gotta fix it. Nope. It's it not uh, gonna be fixed now. Gotta fix. There we go. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta show Bob. Okay. The mom. So what questions we got? Um, I'm gonna start doing friends. the bob head. Let's see. The monk, the wood, the woodworking monkey asked, "What is your oldest plane?" And I don't know if that's oldest acquired um, or oldest in age. My Stanley number seven is a Type Three, I think it is. 
Um, so that's the late 1800s. Um, so that one's you know close to 130 years old, 140 you years a old. Little, wow. um, I have some molding planes that I'm pretty sure are well over 150 years old. Um, I have uh, I have one. Uh, this coffin um, plane, which is probably close to 200. Um, it's probably my oldest tool right off the top of my head. But it wouldn't surprise me if there's something in the shop that's around 300. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the way of things. I'm going to dump the water out of Bob. What else we got, babe? What do you call a man with no arms and no legs in the water? Bob. <gasps> Thank you, Alan. A Alan, Ooh. Alan. I told you, Alan. <laughs> Take your mother-in-law out for a cocoa. It's the cocoa fun. All right. I'll hold her to it. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to cool down here in order for it to be a hot cocoa. <laughs> you could get a... Pumpkin spice. Okay. Oh, yeah. There then you it go. doesn't matter how hot it is. Oh, well, I think we have a child trying to. Is <laughs> someone waking up? Oh, I'm too sure it's our insomniac Arthur. Yeah. So, uh, what are our questions we got? So, S. Richie asks, would you ever consider doing a video on how to make a drill brace? I do want to do that someday. Oh, hang on. Um. What? Do we have to do mom joke or mom oh, joke or yeah. Dad? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You need a mom joke. Go ahead, Mom. Oh, oh, I get to do it? Yeah, you yes. pick the joke. Ooh. The ones that are X'd out are the ones I've done. Is it okay. a grandmother joke? <laughs> no, my grandchildren are not down here. <laughs> well, then maybe it's another level. You know. Do I have to go in order? No. no. You okay. can pick whichever one you want. Oh, I actually <laughs> used this one before, and I never marked oh, it. Oh, so. okay. Well, that's good. ch ch, -ch, -ch um, All right. What do you call a fat psychic? <laughs> Come on, guess. <laughs> no? A fortune teller. <laughs> fortune. I like fortune. that one. Fortune. It's a good yeah. grandma joke right there. Right, right here. Okay, let's. There you go. Someone's All right. yelling upstairs. I'm going to find others. All right, so you said you're going to make a drill press sometime? Yes, oh, well, not a drill press. It's a, a, a brace. brace. So a wooden I'm sorry, brace. not press. Um, so just like a regular brace. But you can make one with a, a wooden The joke um, sounded brace. out. Oh no. The what? What's that? The joke sounded out. So it oh. It's um, a fortune. Tell yes, it again. I do want oh, to. You gotta okay. tell it again. All right. Okay. What do you call a fat psychic? A four chin teller. Wah, 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 wah. wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sound effects and all tonight. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> This is so much fun. I remember when we had Chia Pets. He's painting the hair. Yes, I am. <laughs> I think Bob's got more than he does now. Uh -huh. Happy little yeah. mistake right there. You need to have the, the wig on while you do it, though. Oh, do I need to put the wig on? Yeah. yeah. You, you need the wig. Okay, I'll get the wig here in a moment. Is it over there? What other questions we got? All right, so Cryogenic Potatoes asks, can you <laughs> flatten and dimension an oak rough cut 2 by 6 with only a block plane? With only a block plane. Who froze? Two by six. Um, yeah, y yeah, you can do it with just a block plane. The problem with a block plane is it's just not meant for doing large surfaces. Uh, so a block plane, it, it's hard to hold two hands and it's hard to get a lot of pressure behind it to, to flatten out a surface. You can, um, but I would much rather get a uh, like a number four and do it that way. So. Yes. <laughs> Everything you could out you could flatten and dimension an entire board with just a half inch chisel. It takes a lot of skill, but you could. All right, they're saying there, is that better? That you froze and That's we're out better. of focus. But I don't know. Could you don't I look? think they may have been looking. I don't know. Fixed. Okay, we're better okay. now. All right. Someone's probably lagging behind a little. All right. Yeah. Are we, did we answer that? Yep. Rough cut? Okay. Poor man asked, well, got mm -hmm. two questions. Mm -hmm. When is the next build off? Mm -hmm. And what would you consider the basics for rebuilding a, work sh a wood shop? I have five chisels, a draw knife, a marking gauge, and a clamp. Uh, the basics are a chisel, a plane, and a handsaw. 
With those three tools, you can do pretty much everything. Next, you're going to need a brace okay, and I'm bits. You take over for um, a second. But then after that, you just have a lot of other little things that you get as you need okay. for a project. Right. Um, so don't intend to buy just everything. Yeah, just yeah, buy the basics. Like when I started, I had one handsaw, I had a number four, and I had a set of chisels that I got from Harbor Freight. With those items, um, you can do everything in the wood shop. It's going to take a little bit longer, but you can do everything with just those. So, okay. yeah, that's all you need. Now the first question What's about that? when is the next <laughs> build off? I and I'm 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 one of those. I that really really like to. doing build offs, but the amount of work that it takes to make it come together is very prohibitive. Ah. And this summer I just have not had the time. Um, so I don't know. I I, I want to do another one sometime in the future. I just don't have plans yet. Okay. Um, it it has to be when we're back in the states. Yeah. Because I would really like to be in it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to. I just don't have the time. Okay, next question for you is from JB. And he says, I'm building a workbench. How do you feel about mixing species? Any advice or opinions are appreciated. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. My, my bench is mixed. I have uh, walnut and oak. I have cherry on the chops. Um, mixing species is not a problem. It adds character. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, the only thing I, I would I would suggest is that they have similar hardnesses, so don't go mixing together pine and maple, um, because those will bend at very different rates and they'll absorb moisture at different rates. Um, but if you're working with most hardwoods, you know your cherry, your oak, your walnut, your maple, uh, those things will will work really well together. Okay, Bill H asks, what are all the tools? <laughs> <laughs> I have a video on most all of them. <laughs> So if you want to see that, um, go take a look at, at my videos. Okay, he says clamps with notches on them, hanging on the wall in your right hand on your right hand side. Clamps just, with notches hanging um, on the, the wall, right on hand your side. Right, your right hand side. So up. up oh, up. my right hand side. These are oh, oh the the notches. Oh yeah. These are beam clamps. Um, they are an old style pipe clamp. And I have a couple videos on making them, uh, as well as I have many different videos on, on using them in types. They're, they're fairly hard to come by. You don't see these as much anymore. Um, and that makes them, makes them very interesting. But anytime I can get them, I do. Um, I usually am spending anywhere from 10 to $20 a piece. But I have a couple videos on making uh, these ones right here. And I made these as a, uh, with a collaboration uh, with... Uh, Oh, I can't remember his name now. Why am I always having problems with names? <laughs> uh, he's out, right in, out in Washington. Um, if you look up how to make a beam clamp, wood by right, you'll, you'll come across the video on this. I have a link to his channel. But yeah, uh, they're, they're hard to come by, but if you go to a Midwest Tool Collectors Association meet, you'll probably see a few of them there. Which is often my, question, my answer to any question of, how, where do you find that Midwest Tool Collectors Association? You ready for the next question? Yep. Robert Thielen, Thielen asked, what is the smallest plane you have? And I think that's my plane. Nope. <gasps> you have a smaller plane than my plane? I have this one. Ah! Oh. <laughs> uh, this is, this is actually one I bought from Harbor Freight. Um, <laughs> they come in a little set of three, and they're cute, but I've never actually used them. See, um, mine's functioning. Does that well, this one's functioning, too. I can take curls with it. Um, What's that? What would you use that for? Having fun. Um, you know, well, you can do uh, like violin makers' planes. Uh, Luthier's planes are much smaller, and they're for like sculpting out the insides of a curved face on like a violin or something of that nature. Okay, yeah, what's have... your smallest usable plane though? Well, that, that you usable. regularly I mean, that you use regularly, yeah. Uh, probably a block plane. Um, although my side rabbit plane is a little bit smaller than a block plane. Uh, though I. My wife's squirrel tail, uh, although I haven't actually used it. Um, I don't do a lot. If I were to get into instrument making, I'd use a lot more small planes. But I'm not as much into instrument making, so. Try and figure out how to apply these seeds well. I'm thinking this is the best way. Did you make it too wet? Oh, no. <laughs> now he's going to have hairy shoulders, too. 
Oh, pour it on and clean it off. Okay. All right. How about a question from Brian Ross? Hi, James. What is your favorite non-tool project you have made? Um, probably my table. Oh, the dresser. The dresser. No. My first dresser, the one that fell apart on me, because I have a lot of memories in that one. But the table. The table's really beautiful. The one you Although made. Although this bed is really starting to take the cake. The dresser you made for us before we were dating? Yeah. That dresser? Um, I don't know. I've, I, it, it's hard to pick a favorite child. <laughs> one of... No. <laughs> Your mom's here. Do you really want to say that? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. This is working better. Now, has he changed the topic again? I don't know what you're talking about. I, I never know, changed topics. I know. Uh -huh. What you uh -huh. got? So Moon will ask, so Myra, mm -hmm. what is the most embarrassing embarrassing <laughs> thing James has done to you and your husband? I don't know. There's too many to think through. Uh, well, no, I, no I, I would have a very hard time with that. Um, oh, one of my favorite things that he did that was hilarious, I don't know that it was embarrassing, but... <clears throat> as a child we always had Christmas programs I knew this story and he has a younger brother and his younger brother's you know he's a, he's a voiceover guy he's great at memorizing he's he's yeah. the one that Jason usually, is the actor I'm the guy behind the curtain making yeah. the actor look good which this is crazy because James is now the one in front of the camera and Jason is behind the camera with just his voice but anyway so they get up there and Jay Jason's class went first and instead of saying his own lines he said all the lines that James was supposed to say. So when it was James's class's turn to get up, James got up and said, My brother stole my lines. I was very <laughs> off put by that, okay? And he's been traumatized ever since. Traumatized, so that's why I think he stayed, well, until he started his YouTube channels, he stayed behind the camera. But. <laughs> there, Bob is haired. Wait until they dry and I'll scrape off some on the bottom. Okay, so you can take the wig off. Oh, you can take the wig off? Is yeah. that bothering you? It's really bugging me, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what this question is also for your mom. Myra, who's your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> James is a copy of his father, and Jason is my copy. Um, so, um, yeah, there's no favorites in our family. <laughs> We all know who's your favorite. Mm -hmm. As I said, me. <laughs> yeah, now I, this now is I true. have two girls in there, too. Her daughters-in-laws so. are uh -huh. the favorites. <laughs> and then every country we go to, well, not every country, but um, Cameroon and, and hung Hungary, we have three kids from those countries. And so I have just too many to pick from <laughs> on any given day. So now what about grandbaby? No. <laughs> Does anyone want to see... My mother and uh, my wife do a carve off. Nobody has said that they want to at okay, all. Okay, we, so. we won't do that then. Yeah, John. Okay, here, hang on. Let me get some questions. <laughs> Wait, I gotta read through the comments. Jonathan sure. Haney says, <laughs> "I have a few 12 to 18 inch sections of an ash trunk we had cut down the summer. What's the easiest way to get them into usable chunks without a chainsaw or sawmill?" 12 to 18 inch ash trunks. Um, Without a chainsaw or a sound sawmill, uh, the easiest way is with a bandsaw. So if you have a shop with a bandsaw running it through that. Um, the next easiest way is to get a, uh, a frame saw like this one. Um, this will do quick work and cut through them rather rapidly. Um, but if you don't have that, then just grab a handsaw and devote the time. And just understand the next day your arm's going to be tired. But that's a good way to practice. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not joking, actually. Uh, you get a, a handsaw with large teeth, and it'll actually do pretty good quick work with it. Um, it it's a good way to practice and learn steering and control of the saw. Um, but yeah, you can slab a log into boards with just a handsaw. The, I mean, the other way you can do it is, I have a video on this as well. Um, I think it, the, I entitled the video of how to get free lumber, uh, because I took logs that were like three foot long, and I split them down. Uh, with a maul and and, and uh, wedges and turn them into lumber that way. Um, it is a very wasteful way of making lumber and that you end up with a lot of angles that just are wor worthless. 
but it is one of the best ways to get perfectly straight, beautiful, smooth grain. Um, it will give you the strongest wood you'll ever have. It's even stronger than Quartersawn, uh, far more stable than Quartersawn because Riven wood is phenomenally fun to work with. But yeah. All right, I have half a page of yeses to the carve off. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I will set this up then. While you're setting that up, Cryogenic Potatoes wants to know if. I, and I love. I love that name. I, well, I love the um, clarification in this, which says, Have you ever stabbed yourself with a chisel on an accident? accident. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done it on accident. <laughs> I actually have. Uh, let me see if I can show you this this scar here. Um, well, we're not here. showing scars today. Yeah, my mom just got off open win. heart surgery, so um, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, oh, a, there's yeah. a scar right across here on my thumb, um, and I had a chisel gab me gouge me right there. It was an inch and a half wide chisel. Uh, it was this one right here, actually, this one, and it I, I set it down on the bench, but I didn't realize that I set it with the blade overhanging the bench, and it tipped. And I saw it tipping, and my brain thought, I'm not going to be able to grab it before it starts to fall. I better reach down farther and catch it while it's closer to the ground. And I reached down farther, but my hand went down faster than the chisel, and the chisel went shoop. <laughs> and I won't tell one. you all about his athletic ability. <laughs> yeah, no. Or a lack there. Okay, the there is a really thereof. bad echo over here, by the way, with your microphone and something hooked up over here. Are you hearing it? Or are they yes, hearing? I'm hearing it, but it's I'm not. Oh, you're hearing my, my headphones on the wall. I know. How can I turn it off? It's annoying. <laughs> um, oh, that sounded like I can unplug them for you. Well, she does. Or okay. do you uh, have a question, or do you want to do the... Okay. Sure. I like this question from Nick L. Nick L. Yay, at my first ask me anything. In one minute or less, what is the best wood to forge lasting peace in the Middle East? Oh. <laughs> olive? Oh, olive? Olive branch, yes. yes olive branch. Oh, um, you're good. I don't know. I, w I think I would go with uh, uh, Filipino mahogany. This stuff. Wow. Yeah. Have you, have you ever worked at the Filipino mahogany? Okay, you guys. That's, that's what this is. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the camera here, and here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you both. Um, we'll do five minutes. We'll see how long it goes at five minutes. So you get to pick which piece you want, and I've got. I've got oh, two chisels here. here. So okay, I've so got. It's carved. It's not. We're not. We're not making. No, just carve a, a surface a face. Do I get it. to have a pencil first or no? I know, really. Or is it truly freehand? Um, if you look over there on the. I found one. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. She's not sure. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a pen. There you go. That's good. <laughs> I've got. Um, Saturday's video, grab the green pencil right there. Saturday's video is actually making pencils. This is a color pencil with a colored lead. And you're making it. Okay. All right. Which so do you pick want? your chisel, pick your, your mallet. Well, it doesn't matter to me. Which one fits right, you? You don't even have to have a chisel. Okay. You know the last time I picked up a chisel? I was, yeah. mm -hmm. I was, I was on blood thinner, so I didn't do it. <laughs> I don't even think with my done, gloves Okay, on. wait, hang on. Okay. Yeah, I'll be it moving sounds away like a horrible you. situation. I don't have to I can't read it because Bob Ross is So my only way. other option was to hold the wood with my hand well. Well, that led to me slicing my knuckle with the chisel when it slipped. Oh. Did you show tendon or anything? Oh, Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Please. Okay, there's fresh wounds here. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's right. do this. Okay, Google. Set timer for five minutes. As everybody's like okay, Google's just, just went off. Are we good? Are we going? Okay. Let's see who gets the, the best one. So if anyone has any questions, I will try and read through these and uh, and fill these out. Nobody How about a hatchet asked. off? Ooh, a hatchet yeah. off. I like that one. Nobody has asked about your spelling ability. <laughs> they already know. Yes. Yep. But do they know? Oh, he was kind of at home. Okay. All right. And see, I've been using my palm one, so I haven't known if she's going to be. I let you have the two cherries. So, oh, you're so good. Well, you have the uh, the, the file. Like, hmm? You act like I know. <laughs> oh no. Oh, the grain of this is like really. It's a fun wood to carve. 
All right, you gotta read us the comments. Okay, see. let me see. Um, where's Sarah's step stool? Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I do yeah. have an advantage, but look at those pretty little curls. Let me go get her. Let me get her step curl. stool. And do one. <laughs> There's my back. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Oh, sorry, I didn't pull that up for you. Mm. And for those of you who have been following the channel for a while, you may recognize uh, this, which is the, uh, the step stool I made for Sarah. Do you want it? Sure. I don't know. And that brings her almost up to my height. Okay, so is it just the completion of the heart or decorating? Uh, whatever you want to do. You have five minutes to do whatever you want to do oh, with the heart. okay. All right. And then the audience can uh, uh, can respond. So let's see who we got. Oh. Sarah, it seems like you enjoy hearing about uh, painful things. <laughs> yeah, she does. Ooey gooey. All right, that's not really equal, and that's going to bug me to death. So how Sarah, Sarah has a uh, steady beat, but I can't dance to it. <laughs> she can. Well, it's kind of like when you do chest compressions. You do it to stay alive, <laughs> stay alive. <laughs> it's true. Okay, once again, we're not talking about <laughs> chest compressions. <laughs> can we say? We're doing the hearts again. I should have a broken one in here. One of the questions was, do I prefer um, a leg vise or an end vise? Um, generally, I use the leg vise more than anything else. Um, and, excuse me, I use the end vise more than anything else. And particularly, this one is it's set up to be an end vise so I can put my dogs in it and run down along that. Um, am I even in frame? Okay, I'm hiding behind something over there. <laughs> and, and so I can use it like an end vise, I can use it like a leg vise, I can use it like a moxin vise. And so having this one on the end, uh, I use it almost 90% of the time. Um, it's not that I don't like a leg vise, it's just that this one is far more usable and far more flexible. Ooh, she's turning the work around. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you're helping her do it too. Man, I tell ya. Do you have dust extraction in your shop? Yes, it's called Kids. <laughs> Um, no, I don't use a dust mask in my shop. Um, most hand tool woodworking just doesn't produce dust. Um, most of my wood product is the chips and curls. Um, so it's not a uh, not something I worry about. Let me show you some of the progress so far. Uh, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I want, but we can only do the v, v chisel. What's that? We can only use the one chisel. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, okay. Just do the one chisel for now. Make it even. Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I'm liking this part. You're liking this? Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's see what other questions we got. Uh, do you have dust extraction? No, and uh, yeah, and I, I, one of these days I probably will get a dust extraction that's big enough that will suck up curls and things like that in the, in the shop, um, just because it would be good to have. Um, have you ever wondered why sawdust is called sawdust when every tool in the shop creates sawdust? The router creates sawdust. The the the, uh, the, the planer creates sawdust. Um, the saw creates sawdust. It used to be that a handsaw was the only thing that created sawdust. The chisels created chips. The plane created oh, chisels. It's already oh, it's already oh, oh, stop! Chisels down! Chisels oh, down! No, no. Chisels down! <laughs> okay, Google, thank you. Okay, let's That's see what we got. Five minutes? Are you kidding? That was five minutes. Uh, I have the pretty curl. Here, let's, let's, stuff. let's lay them out can side I, by can side. I just set mine on there. There we go. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> So here we go. We've got uh, two hearts here. And I'll let you guys guess who's is whose. <laughs> let me do this. So uh, this one is Sarah's, and this one is my mom's. 
So, and neither of them have a, an incredible amount of carving uh -huh. experience. I think Sarah has all of like what ten minutes. Whatever we've done on video for oh, your channel kidding. is all I've ever done. Really? And oh. mom, you've done oh, a few I've hours. I've done some, yeah, but not yeah. And so this is this is one of the fun things that I like is with a with a simple V tool like that. Um, See, even I think monkeys I would can have do liked it. Liked oh, <laughs> he didn't. You know, there was a reason why he asked if you've drawn blood with a chisel. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're white, <laughs> and we're the ones with the sharp tools. <laughs> well, see, I was wondering with a palm, if there would have been. Uh huh. You you actually might like my little my little chisels. Well, anyways. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. But. So that was fun. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Next time we do it, we're gonna do a real a real carve off where we actually have a yeah. pattern and something pretty to See, that's what, I, that's what I'd like to do is have the two of them here with a pattern and something set up and I can go read comments and they just carve. Carve for I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Let's see, why don't you go catch okay, up on that comments. That won't be until after January. <laughs> All right. So if anyone has any other fun ideas like that, uh, let me know. But I'm still also waiting. I'm still also waiting for when your oh, dad, I don't have my stool. Your your oh, you dad have comes. It <laughs> your dad comes and you do a um a power tool, tool versus hand yeah, tool. Yeah, power tool versus hand tool. Because I think that's the only way you're going to get him in the shop. Yeah. I notice he's not on the comments. For those your of you dad, who don't know, my dad, dad not, is not my, dad. my dad is power tool only, <laughs> and that is where I learned woodworking. Um, so until I well until like five years ago, I was power tool only. Um, I had a set of chisels, but they were great for opening paint cans. Uh, mm -hmm. Does Dad even have a set of chisels? I mean, you have them. But no, they're mine. Yeah. No. Because yeah. even his bench chisels are mine. Because I, I was the one that always did the chiseling. when We we used to have a building business, a building company. And, uh, and we always teased that Jason or James was the one that would build the house. Jason's the one that would finish it. And I think it would be the opposite now. You'd be the one to furnish it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but Jason believes in sanding, not. Yeah, he's got handled. issues. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so Nick L says, for realsies, um, question, I need to, to rabbit a cabinet case by hand because I have no plane to do it. What pitfalls do I need to be aware of? Um. Rabbit a cabinet case. So I'm guessing you're talking about like insetting a panel or a glass panel into a door. Um, that's most common place for rabbit in that situation, I'm assuming. Uh -huh. um, in which case, I mean, if, if you're doing it before you actually create the panel, creating it along all the pieces and then cutting them into shape is much easier. Uh, but if you're doing it as a piece, you're gonna be doing a lot of carving work. Uh, just understand that the inside of the rabbit generally does not matter. Um, it's only the, the two corners of the rabbit where you actually see them. Um, so if you end up scratching or gouging something inside, oh well, um, relax, it's okay. Um, and there are, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. And I, have, I actually have a video on, there's a live video we did a while ago on, on several different ways to create a rabbit. Um, and you can do it with just a saw, you can do it with just a chisel, you can do it with a rabbiting plane, um, you can do it with a, uh, with a grooving plane, you can do it with a plow plane. It's just a, there's a whole bunch of different ways to create a, a rabbit and uh, experiment with it. Find one that works for you and and go at it. So was it Wild Men Tech? Wild Men Tech, yes. Thank you. Okay, I do, I have to read this one. Fred McIntyre, he says the best way to draw blood. Are you ready? Is with a red marker. That one's good. Sorry. No, no laugh. Really. Sorry, I'd already read it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So she'd already laughed before. I'm so sorry, Fred. I can see the yammer. There's my wife again, cussing. Um, okay, Ka Katrina Link. She Where? says, I'm just starting to explore the world of hand carving, but I have no room. Is there a way to make a small workbench for small apartment that can be can also be put away. Oh, sorry, I didn't Ooh. Yeah, the, the first thing I usually would tell people in that case is try whittling yeah. with just a knife and a you know, protective glove or even with just a thumb protector. Um, you can do a lot of things just sitting down anywhere. 
and that is one of the, the great hand skills that can be done can um, I show her all over the place. Yeah, uh, but like I, with with what I do, I do a lot of mallet carving, and so that usually requires something to clamp it to. Um, I know of a lot of people who make small bench tops that you can clamp to a table or clamp to a kitchen countertop. Um, and all it is is a, is a simple screw clamp. If you look for bench on bench, um, there's a bunch of different des designs out there. And they're like micro benches that are designed to clamp down onto a surface. Okay, so when I was in, um, in Hungary, this was how I carved. Um, we only had a tiny little a balcony that was probably twice the size of the bench and so I would put on my carving glove their um, Kevlar yeah really really good and then James had given me a a little leather thumb protect protector and I would go out on the porch and just whittle away and it was amazing how much I could do with just um, my little tiny my palm guys and then my knives. I have two of them. Um, I've got a two cherries knife too, but um, this was this was my tool of choice most of the time. So even without a bench, you can do some. But if you can, yeah, rigging up a small bench. Yeah, if you're gonna carve, you have to have a a clamp of some sort. That's that's my problem with what I've done here. You got chia seeds on my spoon. <laughs> um, They're edible. This Bob I've hair. done with just a, a regular C clamp, you know, that you can get at any big box store. Oh, hi. I'm just seeing my, the picture over here. Okay, any big box store and a C clamp on on even a table on a table's edge. I, but it's not nearly well, as much fun. Another so suggestion I have is if you can get two wooden uh, screw clamps, what you can do with one is clamp your piece in this. And then you can clamp this to another surface. And so you can have this working out here and working on it in the open air. So you can actually use one to clamp it to the other. What I'll often do is I'll clamp one in here and then I'll, I'll clamp it in my vise. Yeah, so um, but if you don't have a vise, you have two clamps. He you have one to hold the piece out where you can work on it, and you have the other one to clamp it to a table or a countertop. So what would be the best way of making a small bench that could fold away or be put away? Well, honestly, uh, making a, a bench that's like 18 inches by 18 inches, and you can get a small um, face clamp that will that will go on that surface. Um, so basically, just a so could any you clamp like this, but smaller. Get like those little like butcher block uh, things that like. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, go to the go to the uh, the hardware store and get maple butcher block and get a small piece, 18 inches by 18 inches, and it's like inch and a half thick. Um, and with that, you can mount a clamp on one side. And then all you have to do is clamp that down to a surface of a countertop or a table, and you have something that you can you can work on there. I, I actually I know quite a few people who work in uh, um, have apartments, and that's that's pretty much all they do um, is having having a small bench on bench. But yeah, look up bench on bench, and there's a bunch of different designs out there. Did you read Alan's joke? Uh oh, they're whispering. That means yes. I need to read the context. Yes, 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 yes. You got to read it. Because people that don't have the comments can't. It, <clears throat> it's frustrating. So. I, I was trying to figure out why Moonwolf was telling Alan that I was going to come after him. <laughs> and then I saw Alan posted, what do you call a psychic gnome who escaped from prison? Sarah? A small medium at large, a.k.a. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know who your real friends are when they... Yeah. Play. Yeah, yeah. All my friends know the low rider for my 16th birthday. <laughs> that was one of my nicknames. Mosquito. 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 That was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, that was what the football players called me. I said you've never been in a tent with the mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> they make a big difference. All right. Uh, let's see. Yes, that one. Alan asked, ask Bobby Joe if he has a collaboration at work. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, the question. A asked. collaboration in the work Was right it? now. Mm -hmm. I, I have a few people who I'm, I'm, uh, I would like to do another one with um, Blackbeard Woodworking um, and do another Blackbeard, Redbeard, Blackbeard, Redbeard uh, collaboration. That was fun. 
we, we were looking at doing a, a smaller knife, so we'll see how that goes. Um, also, uh, Yuri Tukman, we've, we've talked about doing another collab with that. Um, I've got one that I'm working on with another um, smaller channel. I made some coat racks, and I'm waiting on him to do the finish up on it. He should be installing those here soon, so we'll see how that comes. Um, but yeah. Okay, Fred. Fred McIntyre asked me, for the Hungary people, did you mostly carve spoons? <laughs> no. <laughs> Forks. I, I actually carved hearts and then came home and found out I needed open heart surgery, mm. so I'm not going to be carving any more hearts. <laughs> Next we'll be carving livers. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No more. It hurts. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, she made all these these um, little little hearts, three yeah. dimensional shaped hearts. Uh, really kind of cool. Stand up and lay down flat ones. Um, <laughs> Katrina says, "Thanks for the advice." Last question for me is uh, possibly to rig it to a wooden TV tray hmm. into a workbench. Um, I, I also have seen one very yeah. similar to that where they make a, it's just a bench top like that. You have a butcher block, um, and it it goes down underneath your legs. And so when you sit down on it, your weight is actually holding it in place. So oh. you can sit in one place with it. Uh, I've seen a couple people do that design. That's cool. And that way, it, it's not like a really stable design because whatever you're sitting on, if it's if it's squishy, it'll move around. But if you're sitting on something hard, mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm sure it would be a little uncomfortable. But um, that would be a way of getting a surface that you could take just about anywhere with you. Mm -hmm. There are lots of crazy ideas out there because there are lots of crazy lots of crazy people out there, and the crazy ideas are often the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, when when you're in a place and you don't have a a great mm -hmm. place to do your do your hobbies, and um, I never know where that where I'll end up and what will be available. So, but the TV tray that's an that that's a one I'm I'm going to keep in the back of my mind. Thank you. <laughs> that's how some of the best designs start. Is that you just get that one weird idea that sticks in your brain, mm -hmm. and you start mulling it around until it eventually pops out. And uh, yeah. Okay. What else we got? Um, no more questions. That I, I... There's one that says, "I need one of those thumb gloves." Um, if you look up carving thumb protector, you'll come across those. And then um, I searched for the Kevlar gloves when mm -hmm. I ordered mine. Yeah, I use, um, what do they call them? Not are, slice, mine are cut O's, resistant. Yeah, mine um, are O zeros, but I don't know. Yeah, look up cut resistant glove. Um, they also make chain mail gloves, but those have less grip. It's, a, it's actually amazing how durable those Kevlar gloves are. You can, you can really gouge mm -hmm. into them without ever cutting. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh a, a, abrasion resistant gloves, I believe is what they call them. Yeah, and you can find them at places like Menards, but um, they're not as cut resistant as mm -hmm. the ones I got online, at least. Yeah. yeah you'll, you'll probably end up spending 18, 20 bucks for a pair of gloves, mm -hmm. but they're worth it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm trying to remember what that was. There's a there's an, another bench design that you might want to look at. It's called the um, Moravian bench. There we are. Um, a Moravian bench is it's it's a full size bench, but it's designed to all be taken apart. Um, and I've seen videos of guys who will take it apart and put it back together in three or four minutes. Um, and you the, the full disassemble and reassemble in three or four minutes. And it's it's a fully functional um, bench with leg vice, but then it all stacks up into a space in the corner of a room. Um, and I've seen quite a few people do that. And I've actually thought about making one for traveling. So uh, it be a fun one. We'll see. <laughs> for when you're running through the woods with your knife? Yeah, yeah. That way I can carry my bench with me. <laughs> yeah. You have more things to carry. What's wrong yeah. with them? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm not sure if you've decided if I've given up yet or not. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> Cut, um, Cut Twice says that he's seen them at the Army Supply Store. Oh, yeah. So, that's another um, one. Yeah, like any, any place where there's whittling supplies, you'll find them there. Um, also, a lot of um, big craft supply stores will occasionally have them. Um, i trying to remember where... We used to get them from Granger when uh, one of the places I worked, we had a lot of large, sharp objects, and we bought those at Granger. Um, but generally, Amazon is the... 
the fastest place. <laughs> okay, S. Richie, yes, I have joined the Zipper Chest Brotherhood or Sisterhood, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, family. <laughs> family. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, yeah, and then Porman wants to know if pickle juice can really help a kidney stone. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting other medical questions. I'd have to say, we never had that on stock in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. I will say hydrating, hydration helps. And if they ever test your stone, you can figure out what <laughs> it's made out of and you can kind of avoid some of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they suck. I'm sorry. I know. Not personally, but I've taken care of enough okay. people. Okay, a real question. Oh, my God. <laughs> Alan wants to know what are some of your upcoming videos going to be? The bed, maybe. Um, well, you know, the bed. I'm um, Saturday's video is probably going to be making pencils, um, making colored pencils. I want to do that. Um, you laugh because well, they're so expensive at the store. Well, artisan coloring. You pencils. never said it had to be the easy <laughs> way to do anything. When was I? When have I ever done the easy I and know, cheap way? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, the the bed is one that is. Um, I'm hoping to have the first of the two finishing videos actually doing the glue up and uh, the, the smoothing out. Um, that will probably be in a week from Saturday, it's my guess. Um, I've got a, uh, a thing coming up where I want to make a, a two-way uh, a, um, a subscriber counter so it lists uh, cause all my different channels I can have different things where you can see it through a piece of two glass with a wooden box. Um, Kind of a hard thing to explain, but yeah, it'll be coming up. Um, let's see. Oh, I've got an old-fashioned flip clock. So you know the old the, the the things that actually flip. And so I want to make a wooden box that it fits in, and I have all the, the hardware that it goes into. I thought that'd be a fun one. Um, I want to make a trophy rack. Um, I've got a few other projects like that. But Sarah and I were actually talking. Once the bed is done, I think the next piece of furniture will be making a desk um, and making a large one down here for the shop. Because the one I have right now, the one Sarah's working on, is a cheapo, junky thing from Ikea. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it's even quality for Ikea. I it's, oh, it's, I think it's this is... the grade was... below that. <laughs> yeah. It was like the $25 Shopco thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so we need to make a good live-edge desk um, and long enough so that we can both work at the desk, and I think that's going to be a fun one. Um, I, I may actually make it a two-piece and make two different desks, one that goes upstairs and one that comes downstairs. So we will see. Um, yeah, this is the big ones off the top of my head. Um, but I'm probably going to do a few small projects before jumping in the next piece of furniture. Although I did just today email Matt Cremona and say, hey, you got any slabs for the uh, the desk? So we'll see how that comes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so I might be doing a video with Matt Cremona sometime. Okay. What else you got? Uh, let's see. Levent Ariel Mez. Hi, do you have any experience using Rubio Monaco oil as a finish? Yes, actually my table upstairs, um, the dining room table that we made recently, um, that's finished with Rubio Monaco. Um, I really like that finish. It is, it's very, very good. Um, incredibly easy to apply. Any monkey can put that on and you can get a flawless finish. Um, and He's talking about us again. <laughs> I'm not sure if that makes him the Wicked Witch. Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, the, the nice thing about it is that it, it, it it's a very very close feeling of a finish to um, boiled linseed oil, but it still has that it still has a slight protective finish on it. Um, so it's a it's a really nice finish. I like it. Very very matte. Very nice and good feel. But what it's if I want to fill? It's not a film finish. What's that? So what if I want to fill? You said very matte. I was being funny. ah yes ha ha got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, Bill Tiffin asks, what is your favorite way to make curls? Um, spill plane. Yes, the spill plane. Um, actually, let me see if I can grow one out here. This one should be ready to go. And let's grab one of these. Don't ruin my artwork. A, a spill plane is one of the interesting things because it's intended to make curls. The whole purpose of the plane is making curls. It has no other purpose other than that. Nope. Going against the grain. Oh, this one's going to be. Oh, 
oh. board isn't quite long enough. Yeah. But you get these curls That's coming out. Cool. They're like, well, let me show you this. I thought you were going to say Melody's curls. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That is the easiest. Just send her outside. Mm -hmm. Here. It's like that. It works better with a longer board. Let me see if I can get that longer piece of here. There you go. Okay, while you're working on that. Yes. Cryogenic Potatoes wants to know, have you ever thought of making a sewing machine base table? A sewing machine base table? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> Never done one quite that long before. Yeah, that's a little long for candles. There we go. <laughs> wow. You're so a wall. spill, You're not well, it wouldn't great. be done with wood like this, so you can actually... You'd okay. light one end. We can't see that small. You'd light one end. And You're on the wrong, wrong camera. camera. Oh. <laughs> Hello. There you go. Yeah. You oh, light one oh, end focus, and carry around focus. the It's focused on the wood and not. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh-huh. But here, let me show you. Just a fun plane. <laughs> it's, it's only purpose is to make curls. It doesn't do woodworking. It just makes curls. And I've got like six or seven of them. And I got one over here I want to finish making. Um, but making a sewing machine table. Um, no, I've never never thought about doing that. Although it wouldn't be a bad idea because I have a sewing machine and I don't have a table for it. And I'm always pulling it out and putting it on this weird folding table and the whole thing's going all over the place. Uh, but yeah. Cool. What else we got? Well, Alan wants to know the subscriber count, so I was just going to show... Oh. Can you just um, where I go don't that way? Unplug it. Um, uh, which direction <laughs> is it? There, there we go. The there it is. But I don't know that they can, can you read see it. it. It's one hundred fifteen thousand nine hundred twenty-four. We've gained two since the show started. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nine seventeen when I walked in, though. So oh, so keep it going. Yeah. 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 Now we're currently averaging uh, what one hundred and thirty, hundred and forty subscribers a day. So. Wow. Decent count. Wow. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Porman asked, I still want to see the Leonardo da Vinci um, clock. I'll buy the plastic one and mail it to you if you want. You can keep it. I just want to see it in wood. That'd be fun. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I do want to make a clock. I, I want to do... Excuse um, me. I have a few more tweaks to do on my scroll saw, my foot-powered scroll saw, and I actually want to make a full wooden gear clock. Um, that That's... That one's high on my list, but although I might do that one before the uh, before the desk, although it depends on if that desk is actually last, I might have to um, move the other desk up a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we have clarification on the sewing machine table. It's the old cast iron sewing machines that people convert into end tables or coffee tables. Oh. Ah. I would actually reconvert it into a power base, because <laughs> like with the, uh, the the jigsaw that I have. This would be a lot of fun to hook up to one of those and put the the, the cable on it. Um, this thing's just so much fun. While we were in Hungary, my favorite fence as I'm taking my walk is all of these sewing machine pieces. The oh, old, the panels? Yeah, the old panels. It was really, <laughs> it's, it's amazing what they do with them over there. But as a person that sews, it's like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> They're not using them anymore. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> How many more we got? Well, just a couple more. Richard Wright says, how about a series for building a bench for Sarah? So for an idea. Yes. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting rid of my old bench because it's just taking up a lot of space and it's just, uh, there are far better storage facilities and I've never actually done anything on that bench yet. So I'm thinking about making, because uh, I want to get a Barnes foot-powered lathe. Um, and so put that in there and then have a bench for Sarah. I think that would be a lot of fun. And I know where you can get rid of that bench. Isn't that neat? <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. You want to help me get it out of here? No. No, but she's going to volunteer your father. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then he'll come down to your workshop. <laughs> so, yeah, I am, I am thinking about getting rid of the bench. Um, mm -hmm. Which would be sad because it was my first ever all hand tool woodworking project, but it's a bench. Can so, I got let it go. two questions left. Lisa Alfred asks, do you do any hand sanding on your projects or is your finish from hand planes? Um, that depends. 
Um, hand sanding, contrary to popular belief, the, uh, the, the last thing that touches the wood is sandpaper. The finish will actually penetrate a bit deeper. Um, and the reason being is that the dust actually will clog the pores, which sounds like that will stop at the finish from going down farther, but it actually creates a uh, um, capillary action and will draw it in farther because the dust is in there. Um, so yes, sanding on some finishes will actually will provide a slightly deeper finish, uh, a slightly deeper um, absorption. If I'm going to be doing something that is in my hand or is a very odd organic shape, usually sanding is going to be the last thing because it's just easier to sand than it is to scrape. Um, <laughs> If it is a finish that is going to require sanding after each time, um, then I usually just plane it rather than sanding uh, because the dust that gets in those pores will then come out into the finish and that's what you're having to sand off in between coats of finish. So if you're doing a shellac or poly where you have to sand in between finish, it's usually just because you have a lot of dust that's stuck into the, stuck into the wood. If it is a large surface, like the tabletop or something of that nature, usually the last thing to touch it for me is a card scraper. Um, that the, the finish on that is is just unbeatable, um, but every project's a little bit different. Um, so yeah, on my uh, the bed, the last thing I'll touch that will probably be the hand plane uh, before finish goes into it. So everything's a little different. Okay, the last question for the night. Moonwolf seventy one s Sarah, did James ever get out of that doghouse? He's said about from last <laughs> week he had to make from himself. <laughs> I don't know, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he called me a monkey this week. I yeah, think he's yeah. back in it. Mean, and, mm, and mom. And mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Can't but even use my dad's garage gar gar <laughs> <house. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and that's really little, too. <laughs> And then Nick says, did I hear a bench giveaway? <laughs> no. <laughs> I might give it away, no. but it would probably be to my mom. <laughs> Sarah already said mom, mom called dibs, so it's okay. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, though. I'm going to be in Korea, and if you are in Korea or the Singapore, I would love to meet up with you. Um, when we were in Germany, we met up with... Um, one of the guys off of the lives there and that was a blast so if you're in South Korea South Korea not North South Korea <laughs> um, <laughs> um, or Singapore let me know can they even watch it in North Korea no they can't even watch it in North Korea no but we'll be really close to the line yeah and if you want to contact her you can get a hold of her on the Wood by Right Hive Mind group on Facebook yeah and if you're not part of that join just ask it. to join yes. yeah that's where I tend to bounce a lot of ideas about what I'm working on and what's going on in the shop. So yeah. that's, the, that's the fun group. <laughs> Follow up on the so doghouse so question. Did James learn to stop digging when he finds himself in too deep? No. No, one of these days I'm going to hit China. We talked about that today. Yeah. <laughs> or was that last night? <laughs> Both. It's a daily occurrence. <laughs> it's been his whole life. Sorry. Started cool. really early on. I think that'll do it. This has been a fun one. Um, next week, we're probably going to be getting back into working on a project. So if you have something particular you'd like to see me do, let me know. I've got a few ideas in the back of my brain, um, but we'll see. So I'm thinking about actually hanging an axe because I have an axe head here, and I want to do that. So that might be a, a fun one, uh, one project. But if you have something you'd like to see me do, let me know, and maybe we'll do that. So I think that will about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. No. Nope. I'm you not can gonna say do bye it. <laughs> Hold that position. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to see how long you can do it. <laughs>